Hi, Stephen. Hey, Kelsey. How are you? Hey, I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing well, doing fantastic. But by, by the way, it's Stefan, not Stephen. Stefan, sorry. I was reading your name thinking it's one of the two, and I'm probably going to say it the wrong way. Oh, it's all good. 50 50 shot. You messed up, but that's okay. No, my, my parents didn't. They, they made it very phonetically ambiguous with the pH. I feel like, yes, the pH. Yep, yep. Yeah. Alas. alas. Um, uh, is it too echoey in here or does this sound okay to you? No, I feel like it's just the right amount of echo. It gives a nice vibrato to Perfect. the voice. So it's <laughs> Perfect. Let me, um, I'm gonna take my heads, headphones out for one second and just shift my desk so that the light is, looks a little bit more normal. Just one sec, okay? Sounds good. Okay. Okay, a little better, right? Wonderful. I love the lights too. That's really great. Thanks, thanks. I just put those up the other day, trying to make it a little more Christmassy in here. Oh, nice, nice. I should do that. Mine is very bare. I lo I'm very, <laughs> it's a very bah humbug vibe over here. I got to get some <laughs> lights in there. Uh, All good. I was going to say too, you look wonderful. Makeup oh, and everything. You're Gosh, sweet. I Thanks. <laughs> I actually, I did, um, I did an Elizabeth Holmes sketch video earlier today. And so my makeup looked like really insane. And I tried to just like make it a little more normal. Do you know who Elizabeth Holmes is? I was gonna say I don't know who that is. But. Oh, she's that um, that creepy woman who invented that company Theranos. They did like an HBO series on her, and then she's she's being charged with fraud now because she like anyway, it's a whole thing. Ah, but she's a ah. she's an interesting uh, interesting character. But she always looks really creepy. So, uh, but thank you. I'm glad that my, I changed my makeup enough to not look like an insane clown. So. Oh man, that's great. I, I would have appreciated the Elizabeth Holmes as well. That that look is uh I'm sure good. But it's a lot. It's intense. <laughs> uh, but it's almost like you have a, a makeup tutorial showcase or, or something. Thanks. Uh, I I hope. <laughs> I hope it looks like I know what I'm doing a little bit. No, it looks great. I haven't seen because my I'm quarantined with my wife basically. We go out for basic necessities uh, not barbers apparently but yeah <laughs> i uh i uh yeah i don't think she's worn makeup in a long time not that that's bad love yeah. you babe but um you know just <laughs> yeah, having it's really not i mean if if you don't really have anywhere to be i know that it doesn't feel like you need to i've just i like doing my makeup a lot it makes me feel a little bit more like i'm getting my shit together for the day so i've tried to stick with it a little bit but it's tough. Nice. Nice. I, I was gonna, <laughs> I was gonna ask too. I mean, how, um, well you have makeup, you also have your show or you had your show stand, uh, makeup with standups where, Oh, standups doing makeup. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so freaking funny too. I saw a bunch <laughs> of episodes you. of that. I think Jim Norton's episode may have been my favorite, yeah. but, um, <laughs> that, that is also, I, I never thought about that, but I, I, and I'd love to talk about it in a second, but you just have, yeah. it seems so many passions and so many talents where oh, thank you you're really you're like a professional at foosball <laughs> professional <laughs> comedian podcaster and uh, makeup artist and you've been able to they're not just islands they've kind of gone right. up and connected with each other through the bridges that you've created not waiting for uh fate or whatever and i, I think it's so cool that you've been able to intertwine that and so Thank i mean I, I was i was just gonna ask too i mean how or what points in your career and and when you're going through comedy and everything were you thinking oh you know what this fits with stand or this fits with foosball or this fits with uh makeup etc yeah um i'm trying to think what made me get into doing the whole stand-ups doing makeup thing i don't do those episodes anymore but they are all on youtube for anybody to watch i believe there's 22 episodes um and it was so fun. Um, I just did um, somebody's podcast where he was asking uh, kind of like a similar question. And if there's any of these products I did that were failures or like didn't really do anything. And I don't really look at them and think that anything was a 
big failure, but stand-ups doing makeup is something where it's like, you know what, this sounds fun. This is something I want to do. And I think it's a way to combine comedy and makeup, but it's not like it was, it became some like household name web series or anything like that, but I'm still so glad I did it. And it was, you know, fun to do. And then the foosball stuff, uh, John Heffron, who I is a great comedian I've worked with um several times over the years he was the one that was like why are you not doing something with foosball it doesn't make any sense like you're the only person on the planet who's a comedian and a pro foosball player you need to combine them somehow it's just it's it's stupid to not and so um at that point i i was already working with all things comedy for my podcast self helpless and i just approached them and said look i've got this idea for a foosball web series where I just play other comedians at foosball and we do weird challenges with it. And they're like, yep, love it. Let's give it a try. And so now that also is at, I believe, 23 episodes. And that's still, that's still an active show. We just, because of COVID, had to temporarily stop shooting. But I'm really excited to be able to shoot more episodes. That's really cool. And, and I know that foosball is a huge part of your life. That's how you, I've heard you in, in podcasts and in your stand-up yeah. say that that's how your parents met, which is, mm-hmm. or I was going to say really cool, but really interesting. And, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And, and it's, it's so cool how it matched where having comedians and playing against them because they're such big shit talkers. And, oh my God, uh, the biggest. Seeing them lose is so satisfying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad it's satisfying for other people too because I mean of course it's satisfying for me especially if it's you know some like yoked out dude to have them come on and just be so like not a ton of people have come on Rissa Fury and outright been like yeah I think I'm gonna kick your ass a lot of people come in like look I'm gonna try try my best but I'm probably not gonna beat you but the people who come on and really think that they can beat me and then don't it's such a mm, chef's kiss. I love that <laughs> feeling. That's, Delicious. that's a good feeling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I was gonna, it was so cool to see too. I remember seeing Jeff die and you know how <laughs> people have to kind of focus too when they're playing and you're just going around in circles verbally and skillfully on the game too. Like, oh, Jeff, you believe in Bigfoot? And he's like, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, and you're like, oh, okay. So do you believe in Santa Claus? And he's trying to, he's usually so quick witted, but he's not usually playing foosball. So it was great to see that as well. <laughs> Thanks. It took me a while. I mean, you can kind of see it in the first um, handful of episodes that I hope it's not too apparent, but I felt like I was struggling a little bit to juggle all of that because never in my life had I been playing foosball and hosting a show at the same time. And not just like hosting a show, but it's, you know, it's a comedy show. So you're you're trying to be kind of like on and also keeping the conversation going and playing foosball in a way that's going to be impressive, hopefully to the people watching. Yeah. Cause like, that's part of why they're going to go watch. And um, I don't, I mean, I, I don't know how people would <laughs> know unless they went, but most people don't know that if you are at um, a professional foosball tournament, like people don't talk when they play. There's no, it's not like this shit talky environment. There's refs sitting there at the matches. And so if people get too shit talk your mouthy, like you would get penalized for it. So um, is, that was is there like whole... an equivalent to like a red card or something in foosball? Yeah. So yeah. Like yeah, a little yeah. red they... card, just a mini one. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like tiny, like <laughs> the, sand- the sandwich toothpick with the frilly, like you just put that on there. <laughs> Oh, I love it. Love That's it. a great visual. Um, I had never <laughs> thought of that. Like a tiny little red flag. That's so funny for you to say that. Um, yeah, uh, but there are, th- so there's time limits on each of the rods. So somebody can't just okay. sit there okay. and wait, you know, two minutes to shoot the ball. You have to shoot within 15 seconds. So there's stuff like that. There's, um, you can get in trouble for jarring, which is if you're playing defense too aggressively and you're physically moving the ball because you're moving the rod so hard um okay okay lots of different things you can get called for but um anyway this is to say that 
I've played foosball since I was like two years old, could stand on a stool to see the table. And in all these tournaments, that's not a skill set that you, like you don't use those muscles at the same time. You're not talking with somebody as you're playing. If you, there's video of me on YouTube at the, the major tournaments and it is like, it's like chess, like nobody talks, <laughs> it's very serious. And so um, it took me a while to feel comfortable on Rissa Fury, having a conversation with my opponent and um, keeping the, the game itself going and playing foosball. It's, it's a lot <laughs> to juggle. So, Oh my yeah. God. I, you know, I didn't even think about that, but that's so true. And I just finished watching the Queens gambit as well. Yes. So I just imagined yeah. her going through and she's like, what you going to do next, bitch. Got your rook, you know, trying to <laughs> yeah. talk, I, but yeah. there's, there's so much concentration involved. I'm, I'm sure it's, it's difficult to get into that, but I thought, <clears throat> excuse me, <laughs> almost uh, yeah. coughed and sneezed at the same time. Uh, I thought that, <laughs> see, it's difficult just talking as is, but like playing it foosball. Is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> uh, but I was going to ask too, what, what is like the biggest mistake you see amongst your uh, opponents of that level? Because I want, I want to be the best foosball player amongst my friends. And so sure. I, I'm not yet, but I want to be good. So I don't know the techniques. Maybe I should just Love watch it. YouTube videos, watch you. I'm not <laughs> sure. Like what's, what's um, a big mistake. So you're asking what's a big mistake amongst like the comedians I'm playing or the other foosball players. I'm curious about both, but I think maybe okay. my level is more towards the comedians, the comedians. But, but so one of, that's a good question. One of the biggest, um, things I see happen during Rissa Fury is that people forget to be thinking about defense at the same time as they're thinking about playing offense. So that's what I love so much about foosball is it's so fast paced that mm -hmm. you're, it's like you're switching between offense and defense every millisecond, right? Like depending on where the ball yeah. is. So mm -hmm. a lot of people forget to keep their, um, their defenders in front of the goalie they'll like shoot a shot from the back and then be playing on the front half of of the table and yeah. not realize that they didn't move their men back to be blocking the goal so then all of a sudden uh... i'll have the ball and it'll be a wide open goal because they didn't remember to move so it's again it is so much like chess in that way where it's like you if you have the ball you want to take a second to move your rods back to where they need to be so that's a big one is trying to keep all of that going at the same time oh okay that's very very good i you know it's funny because i like being on defense because strictly because there are less guys on the rod and so i only <laughs> have to focus on Three. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's, and then an, yeah. on offense, I get way too overwhelmed. The ball can go anywhere. So what I do is I make sure that my defense guys are all straight and all in the right position, but then on the offense, they're all askew. It's like a yeah. Roman bathhouse or something, just everywhere. <laughs> so, just everywhere. Chaos. Yeah. yeah. Uh, also the two, if you are putting your men in front of the goalie i always tell the the comics if if they make that mistake to put the toes of the goalie forward a little bit because what happens is sometimes they'll like tilt them back and if a ball hits it hard enough it's just going to knock it's going to go through your man but if you keep the toes forward a little bit and the ball hits it a lot of the time it it will help deflect it more rather than like hitting it and going into the goal so just a little tip <laughs> oh, that's a, oh my God. That's a great tip because it go. I do that and it goes right through the feet all the time. Right. Oh, right. And man. then it's as if that, that you didn't even have a man there anyway. So trying to keep your toes forward a little bit is always, um, always good. Oh, I love these tips. This is beautiful. Oh my God. <laughs> Happy gonna... to give them. <laughs> I love talking. I mean, I, it's, I love talking about baseball so much. I could talk about it all day. Now here, you may have gotten this question already, but I was going to ask, had, I, I see every time I see a foosball table, it's just boring. Mm -hmm. Maybe there are different colors, but it's just the same old dude. Are there any sure. like custom foosball dudes or women where it's like, mm -hmm. here's a Kelsey Cook figurine on the defense <laughs> rod or like the goalie? Has that uh, happened or is that a thing? 
I have seen some pictures online. There's a Barbie table. I know that people have stuck actual Barbies on the rods as foosball men. I, I think they've done it with TV shows too, where different characters are the different faces. The uh-huh. thing is though, I don't, I mean, especially with Barbies, like, oh, and there was one from Burning Man that were, that were dildos, like giant <laughs> dildos were the foosball men. Yeah, it was a, <laughs> one of the best things I've ever seen. The, oh the problem is once you start doing that sort of shit with the table, especially dildos, they're, they're not going to be good. I would always rather have right. them be like the standard men and have the play be the way it's supposed to be than some, but I mean, it would be cool if, if you just wanted to, for like novelty sake, have some cool table like that. But yeah, I would always want to make sure I had like a tornado or a warrior, which are the two top tables and <laughs> oh okay nice nice because that's what i would have i would love if i was able to put maybe just like the captain position maybe the center offense if that's the yeah. captain i'm making it up but like you could just <laughs> screw off the head and you can put on a miniature of one of yours and i thought that would be amazing but next time yeah i'll invent it i would love um, that yeah but it's a life that, goal that, right there for me that'd be pretty cool <laughs> Yes, I hope I see it someday. The Kelsey Cook <laughs> collectible figure. Awesome. Uh, but I, I was also yeah. going to ask too, I mean, I, I know that and I feel like from hearing about your your passions and your talents and everything, I know that your parents and you talk specifically about your dad. I mean, he was uh, doing slam poetry. He was a professional mm-hmm. yo-yo player which I hope mm-hmm. you guys call him Yo-Yo Pa at some point. And then uh, <laughs> I think trumpet as well. I, I saw on Instagram today, you have like the Tuesday trumpet hits where he did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, today. And there's a playlist yeah. on Spotify, which a link will be in the show notes so people can hear. That. Oh, awesome. But, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it seems like, and I, I mean, through what I've heard, what I've seen of, of yours, you've been able to put the that attribute or that characteristic where it's like you get interested in something and you become the best at it from your oh, um, your your parents and your dad. And I wanted to just hopefully segue that tactfully into self helpless, where yeah, amazing <laughs> podcast totally i love it i love the dynamic between you and taylor and delaney and i was just listening to the latest episode today where you guys were talking about oh i mean if you listen back to like the first episode we're totally right. different people than than we were or than we are now right yeah uh, and I, I was i think that's so cool first off because i am 200 episodes in and i'm the same exact i might be worse than when i started <laughs> off so you haven't I, aged well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm getting gray hairs of uh, a shitty person. So, uh, but I feel like, I feel like it's so true in listening to you guys and the amazing guests that you guys have on some are comedians, some are um, experts in different fields. I wanted to ask, like, what were your expectations first going into self helpless being like, okay, we're going to do this podcast. What yeah. were your initial thoughts going into it? Oh my God, we had none. That's, and I feel like so often that's the case is that the thing that you just are like throwing against the wall to see if something happens with it sometimes ends up being the thing that gets a bunch of followers and that people love. Uh, But we really, Taylor and Delaney and I came together initially to write a pilot together. And so we were working on that. And while we were kind of, waiting for something to happen with that we were just like well why don't we why don't we do a podcast um taylor it was she was the one to go like we all love self-help why don't we just do this and see where it goes and i had done a podcast for five years before that called cooked where i had um a, kind of the, this same format in terms of having i just had a different guest on every week um and you know, like I mentioned at the beginning of this episode, how some things are, you don't want to say failures, but don't really go anywhere. That was another, like cooked was like that for me where it didn't really change my career. It was, it was just good for me to get that experience, but it wasn't like the thing. 
And then doing self helpless with Taylor and Delaney, we had no expectations for it. And um, gosh, now it's been three and a half years. And it's the thing that has helped all of us so much at different times with like, going on the road and having people in the crowd be there from self helpless or um, now having sponsors with the podcast and having it help pay our bills. It's, it's all these things that you just don't expect. <laughs> um, at least we didn't in the beginning, we were just kind of doing it for fun. Oh my God. That is so cool. And it's really cool to hear too, where I know you had cooked and although that didn't get to the level that self helpless did, I think it was good experience to bring you to that level. Like you said, to be the, the crucial member, you guys are like, the Avengers. So no, you, you guys are like <laughs> you guys are like me. the Thank the you. solid defense rod in foosball, where it's like you guys unstoppable, unstoppable. Uh, that's very sweet. Thank you. <laughs> but it's amazing, and and it's so cool too to lead, to see the reviews as well. Where I think I had first found it on Spotify just randomly. Okay. And I had seen Taylor's special before. And then I mm -hmm. found out about you and Delaney. So I started following you guys. And I, yeah. I started really getting into your stand up too. I mean, jumping into that, that is yeah. your stand up's incredible. You're I feel oh, like you're a really you. good. Yeah, you're, you're like a really good writer. And um, I had Oh, my God, I wrote down examples somewhere some of the stuff that just really hit me. <laughs> Um, I'm so oh, excited uh, for this. <laughs> this is the best. This is exactly the, what I need this year. <laughs> You're awesome. So, okay. So the first thing I, last week I had gotten, my wife was like, you know what? We are going to treat ourselves. We're going to get a facial. So I had a facial for the first time. Not a fan. Nice. Then also had a massage yeah. and was like, Hmm, I don't know about this. And then right after, I didn't know why I felt uneasy about it. And then I saw your clip on Instagram that were, was like, you know, guys, they're, they're, they're scared to get massages because they're afraid it's going to be a woman and they might get an erection. And they're really afraid that it might be a man and they'll get an erection. And I was like, oh my God, maybe that was it. I don't know. And so it just really dug up these feelings inside of me. And I, I, I yeah. have to journal about it. But I mean, you're able to articulate in such a good way, these, these things that, that they're just little seeds in, in my mind. And then you just put that water yeah. on it and then it sprouts into this little laughter flower. And then the, <laughs> a, 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 the other one that I was uh, thinking of, I think it was on Jimmy Fallon when you were talking about how, and everybody says, oh yeah, we're so vain now with our selfies. And you're like, nay, oh yeah, nay. We were, we were more vain before when we would get portraits of ourselves and then give them to people. School oh. picture day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, school picture day was, I mean, I, I cringe now thinking about the fact that we all just like casually did that. And it was just so acceptable to be like, trading like we were little baseball players trading our faces it was just so weird oh my god it was and that you're 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 the way you acted it out too where you're hold you're just holding it out for a coworker, and you're like i signed it oh my god it just killed it's amazing thank you amazing. you're so and you're so kind thank you Oh, I mean, uh, seriously, it, it made my day. It was so, I love good comedy. And when I see, oh, I don't know why I did that. But I love good comedy. <laughs> and uh, and I, I feel like all the things I saw, even the descriptive language, how you were talking about your incident where you found out that you were allergic to latex. Oh, mm -hmm. Yes, that's, um, a, <laughs> that's a sweet, that's a very sweet way to put it. The incident where I learned <laughs> I was allergic to latex, that is the, the Disney synopsis of um, an otherwise otherwise very <laughs> X-rated story. But yeah, that was the, um, the story I told on This Is Not Happening on Comedy Central about, um, yeah, first time I tried masturbating, I ended up in the emergency room. So I don't know how graphic people get on this podcast, but people, the, it's on YouTube if people would like to go watch it, so. Yeah, yes, yes. And <laughs> I have to that. tell you, you made my vagina hurt when you were describing 
your pain because yes. I, I felt phantom pains right like <laughs> where it should be i was like yes. oh god dry yes. as an old as a dead man's breath i mean it's like dr seuss for the vagina it's beautiful <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that was um, what a traumatizing incident that I can't believe was the way I got my first Comedy Central credit. You know, it's <laughs> I would not I, have guessed that back at the age 15, 17, whenever that was. Yeah. Oh, the universe works in mysterious ways. It I guess. really does. So, <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. That is also I do have to say to Comedy Central's credit. The, I, I love, that's like the coolest thing I've ever seen where it shows your the face intro. and then do that 360 around it. So cool. I know. It was so cool to shoot that too. I'd never seen that camera set up. It's, it's pretty cool. Oh my God. And, and I just wanted to ask briefly about stand up. I mean, I know you were going to be a math teacher and you yeah. ended up saying, nay, nay, I'm going to do comedy. <laughs> <laughs> so what yeah. what ignited the spark and and made you think you know what I'm gonna try comedy and and do that yeah um well I got about halfway through college pursuing the math major and just it was just so different than I thought it was gonna be in my mind I had this vision that I was gonna teach like honors algebra two to high schoolers and um, that that would be that would be great and then you teach even just high school math then you take like the full spectrum of mathematics that you could possibly learn within a four-year you know degree and uh -huh. I was in calculus three and I just mm. It had just gotten so far away from my original love for math. Like calculus three is some other shit. You know what I mean? That is some some next level math. And I just um I really wasn't enjoying it anymore. And uh I switched to a broadcast production degree and some of the intro level courses you have to take for that degree included a public speaking class. And um I took it and I just started turning all of my assignments basically into like comedy sketches. Um, and they, you know, didn't need to be, but I just was having so much fun doing them. And like, none of the, everybody else in the class was just getting by like you usually would in any other college class, like just trying to get a grade and get out of there. And I was like coming to class in costume like I had to give a eulogy and I gave it of myself, but from like a crazy aunt of mine, like I dressed and like, I'm not that, I'm not that person, <laughs> but something just, it was happening in me where I was like, I just caught the bug or whatever of, of performing. And I'd always loved making my friends laugh, you know, the, the whole manicure tool masturbation incident. I had all these weird, embarrassing things happen to me growing up and the kind of release from it was telling my friends and making them laugh. So I knew I loved uh -huh. making people laugh, but I just, I never really thought that I could pursue it as a career. Um, so the public speaking thing was happening and then my professor pulled me aside and was like, you kind of remind me of Kristen Wiig. And I just, I think you need to do something with this because, um, you know, I think you're, you're good at it and you obviously enjoy <laughs> doing this type of thing. So I started going to, um, my college had a monthly open mic in a cafeteria, which is just truly the worst way to start a stand-up career ever. Um, <laughs> and then it kind of came full circle. I've been doing, I've been doing stand up for 11 years now and it kind of came full circle because I now do actual like travel to do college shows and a lot of them are held in cafeterias. And so it's just this like weird, like you, <laughs> you work so hard to get out of performing at an open mic in a cafeteria only to like weirdly eclipse that <laughs> and come back around. But at least I get paid to do it now, which is nice. But um, that's true. Yeah, so I started doing that and then um I just yeah 
was loving it and um, then started a show at a bar, like a weekly show at a bar in my college town. And um, now it's been 11 years and I feel so lucky to get to do it full time. I mean, I seriously love it so much still. So it's a, it's a nice thing for sure. Oh my God. That's well, you're great at it. So it shows. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I, I was going to ask, how has it been in the pandemic and, and what, what have you been doing to scratch that comedy itch? Yeah. Um, I, I've done a lot of virtual shows. I, the, the one like road weekend I was able to do um, after COVID hit was I did a weekend at Helium in, in Portland in September. And that felt so nice to just like get a weekend out of LA and go do that. I ended up shooting my first comedy special during the pandemic, which was like such a, that's not how you ever picture shooting your first comedy special, but it's with, um, it's with Epics. It comes out February 26th. It's part of their series called Unprotected Sets. And so it's a group of us each doing um, a 30 minute comedy special. But um, I, so I did those things and then LA had some just weird outdoor shows. Like I did a show at the ocean, like barefoot in the sand with a microphone, which was the first time I've ever had to shave my feet for a show. I was like, this is so like I'm doing, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's not anything you yeah. ever think about. I'm like fully yeah. clothed on stage. And then I was like, well, shit, like, can't be out here like I'm on a you know journey to Mordor gotta get this shit gotta get this shit right so um I did shows like that and then um I was gonna ask really quickly this yeah. is totally not even worth an interruption but I did remember no, from your comedy it. central set the little you were like I'm I'm hunched over like Gollum so I'm like let's do this <laughs> yeah. are you are you a Lord of the Rings fan do you like Lord of the Rings <laughs> I mean not like <laughs> more than the average person I just I guess there's been like a couple references in my in my act but those are the two I think those are the only two in that. <laughs> but maybe that's more than normal I don't know I, I love Harry Potter big Harry Potter fan nice. love nice. Harry Potter and I like Lord of the Rings a lot but I don't like I'm not obsessed with it but um yeah. and besides doing those sort of shows I've just kind of thrown myself into making comedy videos this year and trying to just be as active on social media as I can and while well, still like feeling healthy about it because it can definitely like suck you in too much but TikTok videos all that just I've been doing kind of what I can from home that's really cool and I saw some you I love that ghost filter. I didn't know that was a thing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, TikTok is fucking crazy, man. Like, <laughs> you can be a goddamn magician on there. Like, when I got it to work, I my brain exploded. I was just like, this, what am I, Steven Spielberg? Like, this is crazy. <laughs> you know? I was in my bathroom mirror. I just feel like Avatar, you know? Oh, my God. It's, it's amazing. And it scary. looked like it, too. It look, yeah, well, same, same shit, really. Who cares anymore with TikTok? But it's, yeah. it's. <laughs> Step aside, James Cameron, <laughs> the new director in town. And it's a 12 year old kid. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, seriously, some of those kids are just making bank off of those videos. And like you said, TikTok has the tools that you can just harness to make these awesome pieces or just, yeah. you know, pieces, uh, I don't know. I, whatever they do, whatever the kids do. But I right. thought that was super cool, the ghost thing. Um, and I, I didn't know about this special, but congratulations. And Thank you. That is super awesome. Especially, you know what? You were just like, F it, pandemic. We're just going to do it anyway. And you recorded. That's awesome. Thanks. Yeah, my my managers um, called me and told me about the offer. And they were like, look, this. of course, this isn't how you ever pictured doing your first special because it was, you know, it was like right. outdoors and socially distanced and this whole, right. you know, just right, right, so right. different, but they were like, it's kind of like a period piece. I mean, when else in history are you going to get a shoot a comedy special in the middle of this? And so it's like, yeah, I mean, might as well. 
Oh my God. That's so cool. Cause it, I'm sure it's so terrifying to like, uh, I don't know, do it when, when people are, they, they want to laugh, but they're also freaking out on the inside. And so I feel like people's attention span is a little bit shorter than even normal. And yes. then having coordinating something to get it socially distanced. It's, it's just like, everything's a little tougher than usual. And for me, yeah. I think you guys were talking about habits on the last self helpless podcast. Yeah, many habits. Mm -hmm. And, and I think I heard something from Dave Ramsey too, like 10 years ago, where he was saying, success is really 20% intelligence and 80% habit, where it's like, if you get yourself uh, speaking of yeah. good habits, if you get yourself into good habits, you don't have to, and you guys talked about this too, you don't have to think about them or you don't think about them too much. You just program to do it. And yeah. um, when things get, I think that just throws something in the gears when you just, things get a little bit harder. It adds mental fatigue and then it just becomes so much harder to inch across the finish line. And so I think that's yeah. really cool that, that you were able to do that. And I also, Thanks. the opportunity to call something a period piece sounds super chic. So <laughs> I know, I mean, like, that sounds very like Shakespearean for a special about, you know, like dick jokes, like we, you know, period piece <laughs> is a little, a little fancy. Um, but oh. yeah, I, I totally agree with what you're saying with like the habits and stuff like that. This, I think this year, if you are not a self starter this year, like extra fucked you because there's nobody making you do whatever your usual work is for a lot of people. Um, there's speaking of TikTok, fucking, I love these like motivational videos on TikTok. I just eat them up. They're so good. And there was one I just watched where it was somebody saying, no one's coming to make you do whatever it is that you need to get done that day or whatever it is you need to get done in your career. Like as adults, it's kind of on you, especially if you work in entertainment. It's if you're trying to get, you don't have like a teacher or a coach anymore. That's like, Hey, this assignment is due Friday. And if you don't get a good grade, we're going to tell your parents it's just on you. Like you have to wake up that day and decide right. if you're going to shoot the sketch you want to shoot, or if you're going to write the joke, or if you're going to write whatever, you know? So that's something too, I feel like has been very real this year is that you have to just want to do it badly enough that you get yourself to do it damn yeah yeah that is so true and i love that quote too because it it i i never used to be a quote guy i never yeah. used to really think about quotes too much but now i am i'm clinging to them especially now love just, a quote yes love a good quote oh man oh fuck. It's yeah like, you know, we are basic Frodo... bitches on the show. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, drop... exactly. Are you gonna drop a Frodo quote? Are you gonna drop? I, I was. I was a little shy about it, like a like oh. a little hobbit. But uh, let that you know. freak flag fly, man. Let it out. <laughs> you know what's so sad is I actually just I rewatched it with my wife, and my wife is yeah, she's not a she's not an action person. She's like she watches Grey's Anatomy. She watches home improvement shows mm -hmm. and cook baking shows. Oh God, Britain's greatest baking show. Oh, Loves. great British baking show. So good. So I, good. I also love it. Yes, I got yes. into it. It grew on me and hell yes. I'm there for Paul Hollywood and his ice walker eyes. Just piercing blue. Love but it. Silver Fox. <laughs> uh, so weirdly attracted to him. He's so sexy. I don't know why. It's there's some he, it's he's so confident he's with the so way confident with with the have you seen the way he handles the goods it's just he oh. like goes right into it with his hand just goes takes the pie and then just with the knife I've never seen oh someone God. so confident with their hands yeah. yes and the way he describes what he's looking for in the dish he's like we want the bread to have a good shoe. We don't want it to be stodgy. It needs to have a good crumb to it. It's like, he's so, I don't, I just really, mm, I am, I am here for it, Paul. I am oh here for god. it. He, oh my God. He almost reminds me of my dad. Cause he just like looks me straight in the eyes and tells me what's wrong with everything. And then when he says something's not bad, I, I melt inside. Melt. The handshake. Ugh. Oh my God. The handshake. 
Dude. It's like I, Christmas morning in my body. I just love it. I, I, I love it. it. It's like a warm tart. It's just, oh. It so is. Oh. <laughs> I love that show. Anyway, that I don't is, even know how we got started talking about that, but. That <laughs> is amazing. That's not the first time I've actually accidentally gone on a tangent with Britain's Greatest Bake Off <laughs> with another comedian. It's easy to do. It's easy and, to do. Oh, it is easy to do. But I was just going to say, so my wife and I, we watched, because she likes Lord of the Rings. We ended up watching it yeah. 10 years ago, so we rewatched it. And I was able to do the Smeagol voice. And <gasps> Can I hear I, it? Oh, all right. Okay. If you do one, I'll do one. We'll do it together. Yes. Okay, perfect, perfect. <clears throat> Hello, orcs and hobbitses. Stefan from the <laughs> Comedy <of> the Press <laughs> podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that's really good that's, that was so good it like took my breath away oh my god i love a good impression they just there's something about them that is so magical yeah i wish i could do like a paul hollywood where it's like this sexy confident guy but i've got like the right. really uh you know self-loathing really scrawny guy down like Smeagol, yeah uh, yeah Hello, the creature so. yeah oh that's <laughs> exactly. that is really really good I, thank I, you well done I, I was waiting for an opportunity to to thank you thank you <laughs> i was waiting for an opportunity. that's what this whole podcast has been <laughs> building to is you just subtly were like i'm gonna bring up for this is not happening set and because she references Gollum, and then I eventually will get to do my Gollum impression. <laughs> well played. I, well played I was I, I was gonna say that I was waiting for an excuse to tell anybody, but I like I I, I, I actually invited you on this podcast because I resaw the Comedy yeah. Central clip, and I was like, "This Gollum, really? she's gonna get it. She's gonna love it. She's gonna love I loved it. it. Absolutely it's gonna be it. precious." So. <laughs> you, I think it's harder to do the golem that you're doing, which is the more like speaking calmly, because I feel like everybody's is the like, hey, precious. like the, oh. the angry, yes. like the snarl, but you're like actually talking like him far harder, I think. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I, I'm more of a positive person, so I relate more with the Smeagol. Sometimes I'll go, call him, call him. but I like the... <laughs> Smeagol a little yeah. bit there. <laughs> uh, what a treat for listeners' ears this episode, man. They are really, they are getting the, getting the good one. Oh, God. I'm only like 10 years too late. Maybe 15. I know. Maybe but... that can be like your shtick is that you only do impressions that are like stale. Oh, that's good. I thought you were going to say just do Golem and I could be like the, <laughs> the Golem comedian. Hello, Precious's Airline <laughs> Food. It's so good. Yeah, just do like decade old impressions only. <laughs> like nothing, nothing new, nothing fresh, just old. Just, yeah, just old, just oh, as like Paul Nick Hollywood Cage, would say. Yeah. You know, just too hard, overbaked. Just overbaked. Dumb. Oh. Yeah the number of pastries that have been overbaked on that show what a tragedy oh god and and they i don't want to get into it never mind i was gonna say and they i know i will get worked up i'll get worked up about great british baking show i was gonna ask what is what is your impression that, that you're gonna share oh you know it was just me saying my precious that's all oh! i can do of golem it's just that that's all i have of golem you've got a whole a whole thing it was very yes my wife she she likes it when i talk to her like that so we we've started to take it to the bedroom too but, uh, <laughs> that is disturbing um but i am happy you feel <laughs> comfortable sharing that with me so thank you I'm, that'll be just for us because i'm going to edit that part out the world does not need to know about that. <laughs> okay uh no i'm kidding i'm leaving it in that's gold but as you should kelsey. yeah <laughs> kelsey Thank you so much for the, we're going to get into the advice portion where we're just going to okay. answer some random questions that fans have sent in, but okay. I wanted to ask, do, uh, what have you got going on? What have you got to plug? Uh, where can people find you? All that good stuff. 
Yeah. So um, my Instagram is at Kelsey Cook Comedy, and that is also my TikTok. Um, my podcast is called Self Helpless with Taylor Tomlinson and Delaney Fisher. Uh, you can find it anywhere you listen to podcasts. And then my uh, my foosball web series is on YouTube. It's called Risks of Fury. And I also do monthly makeup workshops over Zoom. So if you are interested, you can DM me um, on Instagram. And yeah, that's, that's about it. Thanks. Nice. I love the modest that's about it, but it's like 17 wonderful, I, very talented things. Yeah. After that, I was like, bitch, you just listed like way too much obnoxious shit to be like, and that's no. it. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. It was all, it was all amazing. Amazing. All right. So we're, we're going to get into the self-help portion of the podcast where we're going to answer some questions before we get into it. I actually, similar to the basic bitches quote, I have a quote that I like to help get us jazzed. I, I usually ask my guests if they have any mm -hmm. inspirational quotes that help get them through their dark days. I know you shared two, I think, but if you've got any more, I will, yeah. I will take them. I will. Sure. Yes. My, I think my favorite quote of all time is go confidently in the direction of your dreams, live the life you've imagined by Henry David Thoreau. Love that quote. It's a magnet on my fridge. Um, this love, is another I, one that it, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. That just one that sunk into my heart. It was like you were speaking directly at me. I know you were, but it was to my heart. <laughs> I felt, oh. Yeah, that was a big quote for helping, like getting me going into stand up because it's just like, you, this is such a weird career path. You know, you don't know what's going to happen. Um, and then another one, and I don't remember who this is by, doesn't apply to every situation, but it's very simple and succinct. It's let go or be dragged. Oh, okay. So there's some, I think some situations in life where um, it is healthier for you if you just, you know, let go, move let go. forward instead of it dragging you. Of course, like we all need to process things we go through, but you know, sometimes if it's like a, a small thing, if you're beating yourself up over like, you know, I don't know, whatever, something in your, in your day to day, let go or be dragged. It'd be good to just like keep it moving, you know, get shit That's done. <clears throat> that's a beautiful quote i actually interpreted it the way wrong way where it's like let go really? or they can drag you to where you want to go and uh oh interesting yeah who knows i I'm, mean up for interpretation no don't do that to me i got it way wrong and it's okay, okay. that's fine <laughs> okay i love you're you're you are so kind by the way kelsey it's so polite i uh, our email oh. correspondence you're always <laughs> like hello hey exclamation points you've been so kind even when i botched the interpretation <laughs> of quotes this is i feel so so nice this is great all right well oh, well thanks <laughs> <laughs> uh and um anyway okay so we've got this quote it's actually not by any person whatsoever it's by a robot okay it's called okay. Inspirobot. And it's an actual thing. Love if you it. go to inspirobot.me, it, it, it'll generate okay. a quote for you on the spot. So what it does is it uses AI to take some of the wisest words known to humankind and then just mash them together for an inspirational quote. Oh my God. The girls and I are going to have a field day with this on Self Helpless. Say what it is again, Inspirobot? Inspirobot dot me I'll, I'll email you the link okay i'm literally writing it down dot right now funny okay all right perfect so and it comes with a beautiful once you get the link it comes with a picture too like this beautiful inspirational picture which oh uh, great we're not showing here but this week's quote we'll try and decipher it maybe it'll make sense maybe it's not uh inspire bots kind of a okay. hit and miss kind of bot but this week okay. inspire bot says have confidence as if you were a fisherman. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. So it's like Mad Libs a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Yes, exactly. I think it's like uh, a Shakespearean quote mixed with uh, Mad TV or something. It just, I don't know where, yeah. or Instagram captions. I think it gets all of it. 
have confidence as if you were a fisherman. I've never um, looked at fishermen as like the beacon of confidence. I just, you know, they kind of keep to themselves. I feel like and they're not like, they don't have like big dick energy. I guess maybe <laughs> they do if they like catch a marlin or something, but I don't know. That's, well, <laughs> again, maybe... Sometimes quotes aren't for everybody. Maybe one of your listeners heard that and it just changed their life. And they're like, fuck, man, that's what I've been needing. It really does nothing for me, but, you know, to each their own. <laughs> I, I love that. It doesn't seem like fishermen have big dick energy. I, I agree with that. Inspired by, you know what this spoke to me? is fishermen, I was thinking about it. I am not an avid fisherman by any means. So I'm totally right. guessing here. But I feel like you go out, when I went fishing with my pops, we yeah. wouldn't catch shit. And he was confident and he was like, you know what? We're gonna catch something today. We never did. I think yeah. we ended up fishing in a lake that didn't have any fish, but he was so confident that it brought <laughs> me joy. And I thought, you know what? We're gonna catch something today. We ended up not, I got hugely disappointed and we stopped fishing. So that's not inspirational, but that's where <laughs> I, I started to go. But, but I think they're always, you, you'll never start fishing if you think that you're not going to catch fish. Cause there are a lot of hours right. that you have to have to uh, sit there and just wait. Yeah. I think the Inspirabot, the word it meant to choose or would have probably made more sense if, is if it said, have the optimism of a fair, whatever the quote is if you switched out optimism oh, instead yes, of confidence yes. because i do think you yeah like you said you need to have some level of optimism going into fishing hoping you catch something but like i don't know confidence just hit weird to me in that context but optimism seems to make more sense i think this is why you are way better than i am at self-help <laughs> because you're right <laughs> that one word that nuance the confidence, because mm -hmm. fishermen don't walk like, yeah, I'm going to catch a big old fish today, yeah. trout all day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> trout all day. Yeah, no. no. No, 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 no. But they're like, but maybe. Optimism, sure. Yeah. It's like right. surfing. I mean, I started surfing this year, and now I'm like, it's like surfing, man. Like, I'm <laughs> oh, gross. I hate who I've become. Um, I, I hope you have a surfing with comics coming out soon. <laughs> That would be. Uh, oh, God. I don't, but you do have to be optimistic to surf. You have to hope that you're going to, like, that it's going to be worth it. You have to catch some waves. You hope you don't fucking die. But, like, it's surfing's like fishing where it requires, you don't just, like, walk outside and do it. You have to, like, put on gear and it's like a whole ordeal. So you have to be optimistic, I would think. That's true. All right. I'm going to inspire about does have a feedback section. So I will put that in there. Um, oh, but... let's Karen inspire a bot. <laughs> Listen, this is not, I know this is a free service, but I am not satisfied and I will not sleep until somebody I... sends me an Amazon gift card. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to speak to manager bot, please. Uh, one star. <laughs> <of five>. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, all right. Now that I feel like we are optimistic, maybe confident and jazzed and inspired, we can move on into the questions. We've only got a couple totally. of these. This first one, cool. it's sent by our fan, Tim. Thank you, Tim. It says, <clears throat> Thanks. how can I get my friend to stop organizing my house? So I have to start by saying it's an incredibly nice gesture, <laughs> but my friend is driving me a little bit insane. I'm kind of a messy person. I recently had to go to the hospital and was there for about a week. I guess he thought it would be a nice thing to give the entire house a makeover. Looks fantastic, but I have absolutely no idea where anything is. <laughs> Super frustrating. Yesterday, I caught him bringing some stuff in from the garage that I absolutely, absolutely didn't want in the house. He straight up argued with me about it, and I relented because I felt it just wasn't worth it. In addition to not knowing where anything is, there's also a lack of privacy. My friend now knows my salary, the size of my penis based on condoms, and the fact that I need pills to make it work sometimes. I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to make him feel unappreciated, but this has to stop. I'm not really sure how to approach the situation. Thanks. <laughs> oh, Tim, what a pickle you find yourself in, my friend. 
Uh, um, yeah. Medium sized pickle. We're not sure. But medium does. to magnum sized pickle. We don't know. <laughs> we don't know what you're packing, but um, your friend does. Oh. But your friend does. <laughs> Oh, I can see that dilemma because yeah, I mean, that's super kind that your friend wanted to do that for you. It sounds, I'm curious if your friend maybe has some OCD tendencies because this is obviously like, yes, it sounds like it's for you in a certain way to try and make you feel better, but it also sounds like they have an itch that they need to scratch if they are going so far out of their way and then getting like frustrated with you if you don't like where things are placed it's like there's a lot of boundary violations happening here so i think yeah. there's totally a way that you can have this conversation where you make it clear that you're appreciative of what they've tried to do and the help they've given you but that ultimately your home is your home and if you don't want them in your space or changing your space like you 100 percent have the right to make that very clear yeah I think that's true. I think you're in it, from your previous quote, you're getting dragged here and you need to yes. let go. And you need to be like, hey, friend, you need to chill out. Because if if somebody says, I'm doing this for you, then they might be doing it for you. But if they say it like, I'm doing this for you, then they might <sighs> yeah. not be doing it for you. And totally. I feel like with the fights that are happening and he's like, this is the best thing for you. I think they're scratching that itch that they've got to just make sure things are neat. Yeah. And I, I don't know the situation. You might be an extreme slob and that's okay. I mean, True. But to, to a point, we don't want to see you on the next episode of Hoarders. Right. I think there needs to be a um, some cleaning that maybe you need to do, but if your friend is finding out your financial information, the size of your pickle and the <laughs> fact that you need pills, medication to, to perform, I mean, that's, that's very private information unless you divulge yeah. that. To them, so, yeah, I, I completely agree. I think what you need to do is you need to create a metaphor for your situation and the metaphor needs to be a mess. And you need to be like, look, friend, we've created a mess and we need to clean this up and the cleaning solution is organize you out of my house <laughs> and stop cleaning yes and i think he'll see it that way you're speaking his language speaking his language 100 yeah. percent. we wish you the best tim yes cheers tim good job cheers. oh this is like iced coffee from this morning so Ugh. i was like is that chardonnay that looks like very fancy <laughs> <laughs> this is like melted coffee ice cubes <laughs> So, the poor oh my man God. Chardonnay. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, the average Joe Chardonnay. I, I end up putting, because I'm an espresso man, but okay. we just, my wife, she wanted to spice things up. So she got a French press and I didn't realize how much caffeine goes into a French press. It's like eight times the amount of a double shot yeah. of espresso. And oh, so the wow. first day I was wired. I mean, I probably could have cleaned up our house, it, although my wife is very neat, so it's very clean already. Yeah. But uh, I, I was very anxious and everything. Yeah. So I tr now I do a trickle, like a very small, a dribble of iced coffee, <laughs> ice, and then a yeah. little milk, water. It's, ugh, it's a disgusting concoction. I don't know why I do it. I need help. So sounds, um, sounds terrible, really. Yeah, yeah. And I'm raising it up to cheers. This is oh, disgusting. All right, let's just move on to the <laughs> That's next That's 2020 question. in a glass right there. <laughs> yes. Oh. <laughs> you need to stop doing that before January 1st, my friend. Leave that <laughs> exactly. You know what? January 1st, Chardonnay, for real. I swear. Resolution. <laughs> for real. Glow up, Stefan. Glow up. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, I'm going to have the confidence of a fisherman the next time you see me. Kelsey <laughs> Hold uh, you to it. <laughs> All right. This next question, it's sent from our fan, Jacob. They found it on Reddit. It says, thank you, Jacob. It says, first forgotten birthday. So today is my 22nd birthday and nobody is remembered. I was expecting it, but it's hurting a lot more than I realized. 
I haven't been this lonely before really struggling in lockdown over this year. Not sure how to pick myself up or even feel slightly relevant to anyone. Any advice here? I, I made that way too sad with the voice. I'm sorry. I know it, it is sad as usual, but I colored in more sad saturation and hues. Um, have you ever had, Kelsey, have you ever had every single person in your life forget your birthday? No. Don't ask me that because it's going to make him feel worse because my answer is no. But I mean, I have an unfair advantage. Like, you know, my job is to have a more like public life. And so generally, you know, on Facebook, whatever people see, it's your birthday, send you happy birthday stuff. But uh, I'm really sorry. First of all, I'm just, I'm really sorry that happened, Jacob. That fucking sucks. Yes. And nobody should go their whole birthday not hearing happy birthday i'm sorry um i think you gotta do what you can for you like what you have control over right because you can't mm -hmm. control if people are going to say happy birthday to you but you can control treating yourself on your birthday so maybe i don't know if you're like okay i mean your, your birthday's passed but you can still celebrate it like go get yourself a little cake go get yourself some cookies if you drink like get yourself a drink um just iced coffee do an iced coffee not made by stefan because it's gonna <laughs> look like <laughs> toilet water but get <laughs> treat yourself do you know try to think of what you would want to do for a friend on their birthday and just just do it for yourself make yourself feel good oh my god that's beautiful advice i love the treat yourself thing because I was going to go on a similar vein here as I was thinking about this. You have to realize the value of yourself and you have to appreciate yourself. And yeah. I was thinking of a way where it would affect people, but you just brought it in. You are your world and you can affect it directly. And being able to celebrate that is important. I was yeah. also thinking that you... And, and I used to be a person, I haven't had every single person forget my birthday. So I'm very sorry, Jacob. But I think there have been some times where I wish more people wish me happy birthday. But I was the type yeah. of person that didn't say anything. I did. I wasn't like, hey, birthday's coming up. Oh. No subtle hints or anything. So I feel like oh. if you're if you're maybe a comedian and you're at that level where you go to bringer shows and stuff like that, if you don't call anybody and be like, hey, have a show coming up, nobody's going to know. Nobody's going to show up. So just be like, hey, I've got yep. a birthday. And I know some people are like, well, I don't like to talk about that. Just talk about it. It's beautiful. You are you. It's your birthday. It's your life. You have just completed another earth cycle of yeah. like another year and people need to celebrate that. And yeah. You're alive. Yeah. yeah. So you're, you're worth it, Jacob. And you need to tell, yeah. promote yourself, promote your brand, promote Jacob, Jacob. I don't want to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jacob. <laughs> I was trying to make it more chic, but yeah. I'm not, no, no, no. We're, we're not pizzazzing Jacob. It's I like Jacob. Jacob. Just like Steven transformed into a Stefan, we've got Jacob to Jacob. And yes. then that could be like Steve to Stefan. You could be a yeah, new person. Classy. Oh, yeah. man. You could be, uh, I mean, Google, Google rebranded. They used to be called Backrub. What? You know that? Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. You could be totally fucking with me right now. And I'd just be like, really? Because I just don't <laughs> No, no, seriously. It was, I, okay, wait, wait, wait. Now I, I'm not sure exactly what it was called, but I think it was called back rub. It was something, it was like foot itch or something weird. Um, and so back. they- Really? That is, I've never heard, that's so weird. Yeah. You audience. could literally be like, did you know that Google used to be called butt plugs are us? And I'd be <laughs> like, that's crazy. Like, I, I mean, <laughs> I-, don't, I, I I that can't that was Toys R Us. They made they they actually went to a child shift, so it went. Uh, oh yeah yeah yeah, big rebrand, big rebrand. <laughs> and it didn't work out for them. That's They're annoying. bankrupt. They should have switched back. I, but who knew? Butt plugs much more interest in in the general population than <laughs> the Barbie <I> Jeep. <laughs> That's beautiful. Well. um, 
I think we gave some solid advice here. So good luck, Jacob. And happy belated birthday. Yeah, happy belated birthday, Jacob. Sorry, this one, at least most every other person's birthday this year also sucked. So maybe take some comfort in knowing that. That Yeah, that's, that's good. I like that. Um, all right, this last question, Kelsey. It comes okay. from fan Delilah. It says, I received flowers from an unknown person. I contacted the flower company and they said they cannot tell me who the flowers are from. I have no idea who would send me flowers. Kind of freaking out. Help. Whoa. Uh, I'm, I'm going to need you, Kelsey, because I have never received flowers from anybody. Maybe my mom, when I got a new job. I think she sent me flowers. What a weird occasion for a for flowers. Yeah, right. that's nice. Um, fuck. If the flower shop won't tell you who sent it, then I really you have to ha there. I would imagine that you could probably think of maybe three people who it could possibly be, and just ask those people like, "Hey, did you send me flowers?" And if they say no, then I've got nothing. I don't know. I, I, I don't know what you would do in that situation then. Yeah. I, I'm questioning the Hippocratic oath that these florists have taken with patient gift recipient confidentiality. Because I don't know. Right. I mean, I think that- You're signing like a HIPAA contract? Like you're, you know, this is edible arrangements. What are we doing? Like, <laughs> relax. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, I don't know. Seriously. Yeah, I think they could give you if you're like, hey, I'm scared for my life. Please tell yeah. me who gave me these these flowers. They I, if I was the if I was florist Steph and I was like, I'm so sorry. I here's the Hippocratic Rose. I can't tell you. Uh it's uh, right. I, I'm or else I'll have to backpedal and I don't want to do that. I don't Look know why at I'm you, puns. Pun city. Well, I was I not prepared. <laughs> You know, tell me this is going to be a pun podcast. I'm so sorry. It happens when I get nervous and the, the puns just <laughs> pour out and I don't know where it stems from. Maybe a beautiful rose, but I don't know who it's from. But oh, I think... oh my. <laughs> oh, what fuck. is happening? This is I'm like, so... I, so I love it. This is like your, your nervous tick is to do puns. Who does that? That's kind of incredible. <laughs> What a weird case of Tourette's, you know, that is just like really it's... good puns. <laughs> well, thank you. I, I appreciate it. Um, but I, I was trying to think of another one, but now I feel comfortable. You, you built me up so I feel comfortable and then it just goes away. And then so. the magic power goes away. So yeah. Funny. Oh God. So uh, anyway, but uh, I think that you should drive into that. If not, like you said, Kelsey, ask around, ask your yeah. friends, be vocal put it on Facebook and be like, OMG flowers, who from? And yeah. maybe someone will say me. And then yeah. love will blossom. Love there it will is. blossom. There it is. Oh God, I didn't, I didn't even think about that one. Oh, oh God. I thought that was intentional. You're too good oh, at it. No. Now you just, it just comes out. Oh God. Well, yeah, subconscious. This is a problem, <laughs> a real problem. I could be like one of the Avengers, except the really shitty one that's just the puns. <laughs> That's it. You just like stun people with, but like you just distract them <laughs> because they're so disgusted by your flower puns. That they're like, what did you just say? And then an, an Avenger with an actual superpower, like, you know. <laughs> Thanos is just like, wait. Turns them into stone or something. Blossom? Did you blossom? And then Captain America knocks yeah. him in the jaw. Done. My work here is yeah. done, people. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh god well what a beautiful way to end the podcast kelsey i wanted to extend you a huge let me just foosball kick it over thank you to oh, you for <laughs> for for being on the show for giving advice sharing a little bit about yourself it was an absolute treat yeah thank you for having me nice to virtually meet you Yes, absolutely. And um, if you're ever in Phoenix, I'd love to catch a show. I don't, do you, do you yes. are you ever in Phoenix? No. I'm not in Phoenix that often, but we'll see once things kind of get started up. Maybe I'll be doing some shows there. 
Nice, nice. It's actually been um, it's been popping lately. I mean, with things haven't closed down, they've been it seems like socially distanced. But uh, I think there are like yeah. five clubs that are open here. But anyway, anyway, you've got your special coming out. I know that you also ha- gave the the follows and the plugs. But just one more time for our listeners that need to hear yeah. things twice. Where can people find you? What have you got for going sure. on? Sure. Please come follow me on Instagram at Kelsey Get Comedy. TikTok is the same and uh, Self Helpless Podcast and Rissa Fury on YouTube. So check them out. Oh, beautiful. And they're all going to be in the show notes. So you can just click, click, Yay. click. And they're there. Thank you. Oh. Thank well, you for thank having you. me, Stefan. Yes. Thank you, Kelsey, so much. And uh, if I don't talk to you soon, have a happy new year and Merry Christmas and happy holidays. Thanks. You too. All right. Bye. Bye.